Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. So a lot of times when I go and do a rehousing video and I feature an acrylic enclosure, I hear from folks from up north in Canada that they can't find those types of enclosures up there. They've asked about shipping to Canada from the United States, but unfortunately, because of the cost of shipping, it's kind of cost prohibitive. Well, recently I got contacted by Jeremy, who runs Primal Fear Tarantula Acrylic Enclosures Company. They put out some beautiful acrylic enclosures, as you will see here. And we hooked up and he sent me some to show off because, again, I like to keep Thomas Big Spiders kind of having that international flavor where people from all across the world can get information from me. And in this case, I'd like folks from Canada to be able to know that they can get some of these acrylic enclosures. So if you look here, these are stunning. There are a couple of the models, the larger ones are eight by eight by 12. There's a terrestrial one and an arboreal one. And as you can see, the arboreal one has two openings, which I absolutely adore. I'm not a huge fan of just enclosures that have just the front opening. So I like the fact that I have the option of the top as well. You can also see the slit enclosures here have one of them has a top opening one has again both front and top opening which I think is awesome so beautiful stuff for folks up north who have been looking for an opportunity to own some acrylics now for the people who are going to come on and say and this happens every single time even though I always put this little warning up there for the people who are going to come on and say they're not worth the money that's fine I'm not trying to convince people that they have to have acrylic or fancy or expensive enclosures I'll have folks that come on and go you just grab some glass and do it yourself that's fantastic for you but there are a lot of folks out there that aren't into the do it yourself stuff that aren't capable of doing the do it yourself stuff or ones that just don't mind spending a couple bucks for a pretty enclosure so if anybody comes on and says those aren't worth the money, I will get you basically a, a link to this part right here where I'm talking about this and that will be my reply to you because it happens every single time and part of me kind of finds it funny and part of me kind of finds it annoying because I always say, buy whatever you want. For some of us, we have big collections now. We can't spend as much money as we could in the past on new spiders because we're kind of at max capacity. So going out and finding some of these, pretty, these pretty enclosures is a fun part of the hobby for us. It's all a matter of if you feel like it's worth the money, then it's worth the money. So enough of me talking. Let's go ahead and take a look at these enclosures and get a little update on my Avicularia, Avicularia Morph 6 or Avicularia Metallica. All right, I was trying to figure out which spider to rehouse into one of the Primal Fear Tarantula enclosures. They're quite pretty, as you can see here, and I got this one all set up and ready to go. Obviously, it was going to be an arboreal, and I realized I haven't done anything with an Avicularia species in quite some time. Now, people get mad at me because I know Avicularia are super popular, and I don't have many of them. So this is going to feature one of the ones I have, which is Avicularia, Avicularia Morph 6, also known as the Avicularia Metallica, due to those little fiber optic-like hairs on the legs. I think I have a picture that I can flash up that I had on Instagram that kind of shows why they have that quote unquote Metallica name, but love these spiders, adorable little guys. And I have a few of them, uh, two of which need rehousings ASAP. Well, not ASAP. I just want to put them in something pretty. So I got these back in February, 2020. And what I'll do is open up this here and hopefully Billy can get some images of it. Now, I'm usually very, very, very careful with rehousings, but for this one here, I'm almost hoping to get her out a bit so we can see her. Let's go ahead and clear some of this webbing. Lots of webbing up top, and there she is down there. Hopefully there's not too much poopy in the way. I'll just get this out of the way. I don't know. Unfortunately, if you'll be able to get a good look at those hairs, maybe be able to zoom in a little bit. Oh, you can see a little, five, that's, uh, they look like little fiber optic hairs to me. But anyway, got them back in February 2020 at the time. They were given to me, from, uh, uh, to me by a hobby buddy, and he had them in temporary little like souffle cups, and we wanted to move them. So what we moved them into was inverted 15-ounce deli cups. I can show a little image of what I set up here. Now, I like these for my Avicularia species. I know some folks don't like the upside-down enclosures. I think the trick with them is to make sure that the spider can get up to the top parts because what happens is they will climb down to drink. They will climb down to hunt as long as there's something kind of bridging the gap between the substrate and the top. So whatever you put in there, you want to make sure it kind of touches the bottom so it can get back up. I've also used the inverted AMAC boxes before. The trick with those is I like 
like to glue a piece of cork bark so that when you assemble the AMAC box, the cork bark again touches the substrate. So if the spider goes down, a lot of times avicularia species, right before a molt, they have a hard time gripping with their little toe claws. So it can be difficult for them to get up to where they need to be to molt. Also in situations where they set up up top of an enclosure and they're not coming down the hunt, you're dropping prey items in on the bottom and they're not coming down to grab those prey items. What I usually do is I just turn the enclosure on its side. I've done this with AMAC boxes. I've done this with the 15 ounce deli cups. I've done it with 32 ounce deli cups. And then I put the prey item up to where their web is, let them grab the prey item, and then I reassemble the thing. So if you think they're not coming down, I believe I shared the story of my avicularia versicolor, my older female who back in the day would never come down to hunt. I would just turn the thing over. She'd have a little opening at the bottom of her webbing. I'd take a pair of tweezers. I'd feed her right through there. She'd come out after a while. She'd come right to the edge of it. Anytime I fed her, she'd grab the item and she'd get fed. So just something to keep in mind because they can be kind of a pain in the butt to house because they do like to, as you can see here, web up high. And this one here, webbed across the entire, I mean, really considerable amount of webbing there all across the top. And that's where she spent a lot of her time. So for slings, the trick is great cross ventilation. If you think there's not a, there's too much ventilation, there's probably not enough. Make sure there's a lot of ventilation in it. And I don't keep them overly moist. I put in a little water dish on the bottom, maybe a little a, a brig of sphagnum moss, which I would keep moss, moist. And the substrate, I'd keep mostly dry, just moisten down a corner, usually that spot with the sphagnum moss. And then every once in a while, I know we talk about not misting. I don't mind misting in supplement to having a water dish or something else. What I like to do is just dribble some water on the webbing. If they have some webbing, a little webbed area, either dribble some water or gently mist there, and they will come out and they'll drink right off the sides of the enclosure. But do not keep them overly moist. I see a lot of folks to get these guys to hear that they need to be kept in very humid environments, and they overdo it with the humidity, and then you end up with what's called SADS, Sudden Avicularia Death Syndrome, where you're seemingly healthy avicularia species just drops dead on you. So the juvenile enclosure, what we have here, just so people are wondering, I use these a lot for my juvenile arboreal species. This is one of the food storage containers. I think this one's the VTOP Mart 5.2 liter. It's about seven and a half inches by seven and a half inches by about nine inches tall. I like these because they're very open. You have a lot of space here and the top comes off, which is also open, which makes rehousings easier. You can also use the one gallon mainstay containers. They're crystal clear. They're gallon jugs. You get them at Walmart. They look beautiful. The only issue I have with them is the top is round and the overall container is rectangular. So if you're rehousing a more feisty or a boreal species, they can get hung up. If it's round, they get hung up in these corners when you're trying to get them out and it can be kind of a PIA to get them out of there, but those work well too. So just choose something that works for you. These guys, I will say I did something I normally don't do with the Vicularia species. I put them in here when they were quite small. They were only probably about an inch, inch and a half or so. And this was a much larger enclosure that I usually put them into, but they did just fine. They webbed up in the spot. I did have to make sure they were getting prey items because they were kind of swimming in the enclosure, but it all worked out in the end. So what we're gonna put her into now is this one here. Let me just move this out of the way for a second. This is one of the Primal Fear Tarantula enclosures that I got. And again, these are only in Canada, but there are a lot of companies in the US that make these types of enclosures. Obviously, Tarantula Cribs comes to mind, Primal Enclosures comes to mind, but this is for the folks up north that are always asking or watching my videos that I have these nice little acrylics and they go, we don't make those up here. You finally have somebody that's making them and they are beautiful. And what I love about this one is I've got the doors off of it, but it's front opening and top opening. I'm not a huge fan of front opening enclosure. This is a personal preference. This doesn't mean other people don't th uh, think differently, but I don't like the, just the ones that open in the front. I like to be able to work in the top. This gives me a lot of different places that I can maneuver the spider from. And what we have in here is substrate, a couple inches of substrate, about an inch and a half or so. That's the only issue I have sometimes. I like to put a lot of substrate in, but there are extra vent holes down here, which is awesome. That's going to keep that good cross ventilation. I've been doing two pieces of cork bark for most of my setups now to give the spider a chance uh, or a choice of where to go. You'll see this one here. I just put some moss behind. This one's got some moss in it. It's a tube 
kind of half of a torque cork bark tube over here. And we've got up top some fake foliage. I did not put real foliage in this because I don't want this one to get a lot of sun or some light. And I'm not going to try growing the plant in here because that means extra moisture, which I don't want to do. And a nice big water dish. And I have seen this one drink quite a few times. I've seen it drink in the water dish and I've seen it drink off the sides of the enclosure if I gently miss it, missed it. Or when it had its nice little web blanket up here, what I used to do is come in with my little squirt bottle and put some water in here and it would go right over and drink, which is great. So what we're going to do now is try to get the spider from point A to point B. Now, these guys have a reputation for being very tractable, very tame. I found that mine are a little bit loopy, but we're going to try to get some good shots of it. So normally I would cup this one immediately, and I probably should, but I want to try to get her out and about so we can see her a little bit Oh my! as she attacks. I'm glad she did that, though, because... Everybody tells me, hold your avicularia species. That is the first one I've had attack a brush in I don't know how many years. So now we're going to stop playing around because obviously she didn't like that. That was funny as heck. <laughs> so for the person who is going to come on and go, they're so cuddly, pick them up. There you go. And that was with me just giving her a little bump in the booty. Where is she there? Up, 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 up. Now you want to continue to go up. And that might have been, eh, I'll have to, I'll watch it on replay. That could have just been a feeding response, honestly. I don't know. She flipped around pretty quickly. Billy's probably afraid to get too up close in there after that little display. But there she is. Beautiful spiders. They really are. And this one does come up a lot of times on beginner species lists. The only reason I'm a little reluctant to recommend them is because, again, the SADs. I can't tell you how many people contact me that have lost either Avicularia species or Carabina versicolor, and they everything seemed great right up until it wasn't. So what we're going to do, I think, is we're going to put the top on this. I can't wait to watch that back to see what it... Well, I'm just kind of curious. Was it, she was, was it a startle response? Did she grab it and attack it, or was it more like Hey, food. Oh, no, not food. All right, so let's see if we can get her going up. Please stay out in the open. Be a doll. Oh, 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 oh. oh my God. So beautiful. So Billy's going to try to get some shots of this one. I think I stopped talking about the rest of the inside. The rest of the enclosure, the it's substrate is BioDude. I've got some leaf litter in there because I like the way it looks. We've got two pieces of cork bark, some sphagnum moss. See if uh, you can know what? Take the top off yes, right I can. No, I can't because look where she's going. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, no, I can't because I think she's gonna be right over the top. I don't know if any of those blues are showing up. Yeah, they are. Ah, Lord, he's a coward, right? I'm gonna close this up real quick, but if you want to get a little shot of her. And there's those little pink toes. I actually had somebody ask me once, why do they call them pink toes? I'm like, yours hasn't gotten big yet, has it? Gorgeous little spiders. Now, this one's offering, she's probably right now, I would say about four inches, four and a half inches or so. So not fully grown. Uh, I had one before, if anybody remembers, years ago, I had one that it was, the, it's still the weirdest, most unexplainable instant or death I've ever had. She, for lack of a better term, she just like ripped off several of her legs and I found her bleeding out. So it didn't look like it was like she had popped them off. They can actually pop off their legs and close off the wounds themselves. And she did not do that. I don't know what happened, but it was a weird, if you go back to my old videos, it's there. Never figured out what happened. Couldn't find anything in the enclosure that might've led her to get her legs stuck. It was just the weirdest thing ever. So what other notes? So for adult enclosures, this one obviously is for folks in Canada. You could look at primal enclosures. You can look at, uh, and there's a lot of stuff out there. Exoterra, what is it? Nano talls are great. The 8x8x12 ones, a lot of folks use those. They work great. I've used extra large critter keepers in the past. Those look work nicely. But do know that with something like an extra large critter keeper, and this is where I think I kind of, 
screwed up when I set mine up. There needs to be a lot of coverage in there. You want to give them places to hide to make them feel more comfortable. I may go ahead. I have another plastic plant around here somewhere and put some more fake foliage in here so that she feels safe because what I want her to do is probably settle either here or here, start webbing around. And I have found with these guys that if they don't feel comfortable, if they don't feel secure, they will just kind of scooch themselves up right in the corner. They don't eat very well. So that's something I always recommend to people that are having a hard time with their avicularia species. If they send me pictures of the enclosures and they're barren, it's like one piece of cork bark, not a lot going on. Add some extra foliage in there for your spider to hide behind. And then obviously we'll, we will be filling this water dish up afterwards. And that's about it for the moisture. What I will sometimes do is overflow the water dish. Not much, just a little bit. So there's a little moist spot over here. And that's it. I don't moisten down all the substrate. I don't miss constantly. I will come in occasionally when I feed and I'll spray off a little spot there. Just give them a little place to drink off the side of the enclosure. But I don't overdo it with the moisture. And then again, key with these guys is ventilation. You want some good ventilation. So this one has ventilation down here, up here, both sides. Ventilation on the top should keep some really good airflow. And if you're keeping these guys in the summer when it gets stuffy, I would encourage you to run a fan in the room. Keep that air flowing. There's one thing to have good ventilation. There's another thing to actually have air pushing through it, circulating through, and keeping it from getting too dank and nasty on the inside. And as far as this species goes, I do want to point out that I see a lot of folks will send pictures of their little avicularia dragging their butts in their hands as they're trying to handle them. And I don't think they realize that these guys have what's called type 2 urticating hairs, which means they spread them via direct contact. So when you see somebody holding it and their spider is like dragging its little butt across their leg, it's it's basically hairing them. And I, I get a giggle out of it when people go, look, it loves me so much. It doesn't love you. It's startled. It's trying to defend itself. So just a heads up there. They are also notorious poo cannons. They will shoot poo right out at you if you get startled. So if you go to pick one up and it holds its ground and its butt's going up the air, up in the air, stand back. There's probably going to be a big squirt of poo coming your direction. So there we go. Avicularia, Avicularia Morph 6 or the Avicularia Metallica. Beautiful, beautiful little spider. They really are underrated. I think it's just because they're so common. And this is one of the ones you often see in pet shops that folks kind of overlook them. And I've done the same thing. I've been guilty of it. But they really are stunning little spiders. And for somebody that's got the patience, does the correct research, they can, I guess, make good beginner species. Just be prepared and get good information before you start keeping them. So again, if you're in the U.S., obviously acrylics have become very popular for tarantulas, and there are a lot of folks out there producing specifically tarantula enclosures with acrylics. So we have a lot of options, but folks up north, now you have an option, which is great. And obviously, as I become aware of more folks producing acrylics and such up there, I will pass that along as well. As for the vicularia, again, always make sure you have that good cross ventilation. Don't overdo it with the moisture. A lot of us keep like mine right now will be kept dry with that water dish, maybe spill some water over and they occasionally moisten some webbing or miss things down. Usually the best time if you're going to do something like that is right before you go to bed and turn the lights off at night because at that point, lights go off, they come out to explore, and they can siphon some of that moisture off the sides of the glass. And I've seen mine do it before in times I've sprayed them down, turn the lights off, come back up later with a flashlight, and there they are kind of sucking up some of that water. But don't overdo it with the moisture. That's the best advice I can give because that seems to be the biggest issue I find when people approach me with sick or dead avicularia species, and I look at their setups, and they tend to be sopping wet, which is a shame because we've already found out that that doesn't quite work for them. All right, so that should do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciate. You can click the little circle right up here. What I will do is put one of Jeremy's videos down here so you can go check out his website and possibly if you're looking for enclosures, end up over there and see what he's got. And I'll put something up here, best for viewer or whatever. As always, you take the time to comment. I will take the time to respond. Just know it can take me a couple days because I tend to get a lot of comments and I'm quite busy this time of year. guys. Stay safe. Catch you all next time.